All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Through Comic Money on comicbookinvest.com. Um, as always, the guys are here with us. Uh, this this week, we got Lee Lowridge with us, uh, and I think I said his last name right. Uh, I always screw it up, but uh, he's, he, if you don't know his name, then you're obviously not reading the best comics out there right now with AWA and his image books and everything. He is a colorist for a lot of awesome books. When Pete and I looked up his uh, long list of books he did, it was like 2,000 plus issues, yeah. and we're like, shit. Uh, how does he? How does he do that many books was, and color them? And we were lot, like, yeah. wow. wow. Like I knew a few, but once I looked up, like hit Comic Vine up, and it's like 19, 1977 returns. I'm like, holy shit! Well, that's how many? Last time I looked, it was like fifteen hundred. I was oh, that's like, all the price stuff. Fables and Hellblade. It was tons but, of stuff. But you're doing what six things for AWA right now, or? It feels like I looked at the list. I'm like, you're coloring almost all of them for actual. He just called you up and said, hey, can you just color them all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to do, like, initially, I got gifted Bad Mother and um, uh, Resistance. and um, But the other ones, that was Axel starting that line. And I kind of, you know, he hit me up to do a few. And, but if you if you open that pantry, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna try to raid it. <laughs> Axel also knows like he had to get stuff done quickly, and I moved pretty fast. And he knows, you know, like I'm not going to jerk him around. A lot of yeah. guys. A lot <laughs> well, of you guys. get me to buy a lot of books, Axel. You get to work with some pretty fabulous artists doing that stuff. Too. Like the the list of artists that he has lined up working those different books. You're like, oh, you get the color with this guy, and you get the color. I mean, does that matter to you, or do you just say, hey, I like the the story? I mean, when you're coloring. No, I look at the art first. Mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, and I know, like, I'll know if that artist kind of matches my style, because I'll yeah. see art that's that demands like more of a, a dipped in oil. I call it, you know, that that real flashy kind of stuff, which mm -hmm. I can do, but I don't like doing. I think it mm -hmm. doesn't service the art unless the art's kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah. so, or or like, <laughs> maybe sometimes not. It's just not what I try to do. You know, I try to yeah. tone it down. I'm not so like today. I'm not the Michael <laughs> But I mean, like when, when I when we pull up, especially I guess for me, when I the reason I jumped on your name or like, hey, let's see if we can get you on was Deadly Class. Um oh, just man. I love that book. And the and those are some of the ones where the cover you I'm s i am feel like you did the cover as well. Like a lot of times colorists don't get to do the don't don't seem like you guys do the covers. You but yeah. it, it was the entire book. I did a few, but I, Wes does a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Um he has Wes has pretty strong opinions on stuff he likes, um, which is you know most of the time <laughs> the right opinion in, in my opinion a lot of yeah. opinions, <laughs> but uh, yeah it's that book is fantastic because that book we initially I did it flat. Mm -hmm. Rick lived in my neighborhood at the time, and then he came over and we were beating around ideas, and I I I'm going to revise history however I want because I'm I'm telling the story right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it flat. I believe Wes wanted it flat. Then Rick made me do it rendered. And if you look at old solicitations for that book, you could see the modeled stuff. Okay. And then like four days later, he came over and I think after they solicited him, he goes, you know, no, 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 no. You, you're right. We should go flat. And uh, <laughs> which I agreed with. I think you, you, uh, you don't really remember a lot of the great books for looking normal, you know, looking uh, run of the mill or house style, you know, in my yeah. opinion. If I could do you, simple, I would do that. It'd go, I'd go like monochromatic with a pop on every page if I could. Well, that was <laughs> well. Shoot, that's Stumptown. You know I mean, yeah. Like when yeah. I think of the iconic books, the yours that you cut, like your colors make it. But like that was one Pete brought up. He's like, dude, Stumptown. I didn't realize you did that. And then it's like, oh, the colors are what make that book stand. Just that stark black. And then, do you do the blacks or is that the inker? Yeah, usually that'll be the inker. Usually, mm -hmm. so but sometimes it'll come in as grays, and I will just mess with it. But I, I usually mess with the blacks as well. Like I, there's usually a haze around the art that I affect. Okay, gotcha. It's a, secret, though. It's a secret trick. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, I, I had to geek out because I'm just. I'm I'm a big fan of the when I see your name on a book, then that uh, just because I know what I'm getting when I open it up from the color standpoint. Cool. Um, there's there's when I I can think of three colorists that and you guys are all very similar in your your palettes that you choose. I think when I, hmm? Probably Hollingsworth. Yep, and Bel Air. Is my is my other one, and she's not quite as much, but 
No, um, Bel Air probably read a looked at a bunch bunch of Matt and I stuff. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she's really good, but come on. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I mean, but like the, your names, but also your names actually make the covers. I mean, that's the thing too. Like colorists, a lot of times don't make. It was hard pulling up your early works without Comic Vine, right? To find your name on the sure. book. Like I had to you open them why? up and read. Hmm? You know why? No. So, and this is what I know from DC. When uh, we would initially, we'd only get our names on the covers if it was a trade. Or, uh, a hardcover, sorry, a hardcover. The okay. hardcovers were not returnable, and a hardcover they would consider your name as a like a marketing device. I don't know why I put that in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess for a marketing standpoint, one, if they put your name on the cover, there there needs to be a royalty plan in place. And on hardcovers, there was a royalty, but on ret single issues, there never was, nor trades, there never was. But mm -hmm. about I guess about eight years ago when image started, you know, really coming to the forefront and I, I believe, and then Marvel kicked off royalties for mm -hmm. color because color started getting a little more like credibility, I guess, which is, which is cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, but then we went to bat a couple of us, like five of us at DC, we bombarded each VP at, you know, <laughs> out drinking just kind of like went in and you know we needed to get royalties like that was crazy that we weren't and then that enabled them to put our names on the covers so which that's cool like i, I mean 25 year old me would have been psyched you know man, like, <laughs> it's nice to have it but i mean i've done so many books you know when i did my first hardcover i was so stoked you know <laughs> I was on the cover it was like batman God, i had it somewhere god what the hell was the name of it was it the Arkham it, Asylum or uh, no, Bob Hall did it? Um, shit, I can't remember the name of it. But that it was before Arkham Asylum, okay. and, um, and I had my name on the cover, and I was, you know, I was all psyched, you know, hung it on my wall. <laughs> I was like, maybe someone will think I'm not a colorist. <laughs> when I think it's part of this book. <laughs> so, but that's why they did that. That's why the uh, names were on. And then all of a sudden, now with digital, it's and all these cheater brushes. You know, everyone's like a superstar and they're doing these, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a style and it is a cheat everyone's doing. It's, it's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. But it's like, you know. And they model everything with one color and it, the, the layer does all the work for you. You know it. Like when you see flesh with that weird red kind of flesh shadow, mm -hmm. those, those, yeah. are, those are the kids using the cheats. It's like, <laughs> a, they're not thinking about it. It's the, you know, the computer's doing it. And that's it right there. And I'm sure that this was a line that was going to come up from one of the three of us at some point tonight. But a bad colorist can really fuck up a book. Like, oh, yeah. In, in, you know, colors, if, if it's there, I mean, black and white books obviously are their own thing or the ones like you were talking about with just a, a pop or a splash someplace. But good color really, really makes a book and it really makes a good artist stand out in a way that they can't. Otherwise, I mean, even like a Jim Lee or, or somebody like that, you know, think of his bad colorists over the years and how bad some of that art looks. Yeah. And you're like, but it's Jim Lee. You're like, but it still looks like shit, you, yeah, you know, at yeah. the end of the day. So well, he's had Alex for like 20 years, you know, yep. had Alex forever. <laughs> well, yeah. that was, people, people's art will get fucked up. Well, that was one of the things we never, when we, the different guests we've had, we had, it was Bob Sally, who's just an indie, small, small time, torch point guy. But he, he, he brought up in his interview, he was like, yeah, I was trying to get Ken Lashley to do a cover. And Lashley said, go get this guy to be your colorist because he's this guy sucks. Like he Lashley said, I will not work with so and so. And you're just like, oh, that the, the fact that artists latch on to a colorist and say, these are the guys I'm going to work with. you got to either tell, especially tell an indie guy, sorry, I'm not going to do your book if you don't get this guy to, to color it because I can't work with the guy you have for five hundred dollars a page or whatever yeah no it won't be that much <laughs> yeah i was just guessing <laughs> uh, uh, it's weird too because some of the companies like you'll get i'll work with certain people or they'll say hey i really want you to do this you know super growth thing and and i'll say make sure you tell them that you want to work with me and uh because they're going to try to push you on one of their contract people yeah. So they're the first in line and then they'll, they'll move people over whether it's right for the book or not. And it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not even an editorial problem. It's just a contractual thing. Huh. But, mm -hmm. but the artists nowadays do kind of, 
I always tell guys, I'm like, just tell them you want me. Yeah. It's not like I'm a newbie, you know, just say I want them to do it. But I had issues at DC for a few years from, uh, from someone who had no hair that didn't like me. <laughs> His name is hmm. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was blacklisted. <laughs> like 100%. <laughs> didn't like your style or didn't like you as a person? I, I never really, I don't think I've spoken more than hello to him. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, I don't think he liked my style. I don't think he got it. Um, and I was doing a shit ton, 90% of my work. And within four years of him being there, I was at to zero. He actually wow. took me off of projects late, wow. later on. Huh. So I, I wasn't supposed to know That's that, but I found out that. <laughs> well, when he got when he got shit canned, I was very happy. Did you send him copies of <laughs> Deadly Class and your Deadly Bay books? And go look. This is what good books look like. And well, he he never liked Vertigo. So oh. <gasps> he didn't like what they, he didn't like what they were doing. He didn't get it. Um, Blasphemy. Fine, it's nothing against him. It's just you know you might you might love football. You don't like baseball. You yeah. know it's it's fine. But from my understanding, I got to be fucking PC. He did not like Vertigo. And from all evidence of Vertigo going away and renaming it Black Label, it's fine. Uh, he did make a good point. He said Vertigo was, was you know, this alternative thing tw 20 years ago, and now none of, none of that stuff's really shocking. And he, I, I, uh, I was with, on board with him on that. But yeah, yeah he, sure. I, don't, I don't think he really liked that stuff, but he should have liked it a lot more because like, if he would have put a little more love into that brand, um, you know, they wouldn't have let Image run run away with all the guys. And yeah, girl, true. And girl. Perhaps he and likes Michael Bay better than, like, a David Fincher type. <laughs> I guess so. I think he just likes good story. You know, I know he's, I know he's a story-first kind of guy, which is yeah. a problem with a lot of companies, I think. I mean, story's really important, but a lot of times the artists get pushed to the side. And as you guys know, you your first thing you do is look at that cover. That's what's drawing you in. So it's yeah. that's not the first time we've heard that recently, too. About like yeah. the Car uh, Quarry Andrews, yeah. he shared yeah. that too. That he got there, all the big DC and Marvel got burned by everyone going to Image, and he's like, that was his theory. It was like they started pushing writers because writers aren't going to leave quite the same way. You as a, a, a they didn't want superstar artists anymore. So yeah, you know, because I mean, DC or Marvel can make you a superstar in. If just in, in a six to eight months if they want. Yeah. You, know, really want time, time, you know, you see some of their young young well other you know, look at like Rosenberg. They they made him a star and you know, mm -hmm. Twitter, you know, yeah. like they uh there's a couple guys and it just put them on their good books. And not that and Matt's a good writer, like, you know, he writes cool stuff and he's a cool guy. And you he, he put in the work, you know. Yeah. But they can make whoever the fuck they want, but art not as subjective. <laughs> True. Yeah. It's either good or it's not. So, but it's also, and we talk about this all the time. Of, it's amazing. Like everyone has their types of books they like, and like right. you said, it's it's a baseball or football or whatever. And like the big thing now with the different cover artists, because now nowadays you, you can have a Momoko who's blowing up, and people either love her or hate her. And then you can have Adam Hughes, and people love her, love him, hate him. Or right. you got you got to love Adam Hughes. You, True. <laughs> I just I said that for these two guys. They love Hughes. I'm not. I'm. I like Hughes, but I'm not a love Hughes guy. Yeah. Um, he is. He's one of the greatest living artists of our generation, for sure. Damn it! I'm gonna lose. I haven't yet to meet someone who who hasn't put Hughes up there. Yeah, he doesn't get any work done because he's just he's. I guess when you're that good, it takes a little while. That genius takes a little longer to pour out. Yeah. But you I just. Do, do you see the 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 Hellboy that released today? He did all the interiors for it. Adam Hughes did. Yeah, yeah. He does one he, one Hellboy a year now. He did one yeah. last year for winter. I want to look at it right now. Hughes, is it bad taste? It's a uh, nope. It's right behind you. He's it holding is. it up. Yeah, I went to go and make oh. sure. I, we'll, we'll just pretend this is not Tuesday. Wait, he's doing the interiors. Yes, and the, the cover, and yeah. the cover. Yeah. Wait, Pete, how do you throw yourself up there on the screen? Oh, uh, just little box down below. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So, I'm looking at it on online. Yeah, this was, was supposed to come out like a long time ago. I had this pre-ordered. It got canceled, and I, so it finally came out today. But you can see it. He he does a 
the interior. Oh, that's definitely Hughes. Oh, yeah, my you see God. It. I think it's just a one shot, though. I think this is just a one shot. Yeah, I, I know historically because he's out of Atlanta. When, when I was getting into comics, I went up to Guy Jin was up there. I guess it was all those guys. And I remember meeting Adam. And oh, was that the Stealthy Studio? What's that? Is that their studio? The him and uh, Brian Stelfries and yeah, I don't, I don't know if they still have it. I don't know what's happening. I haven't been up there I've been in years and years, but I, I saw his art and this Playboy thing he was doing, and it was he was like doing Playboy pinups. Like he was that good. And he was like fucking twenty two, mm -hmm. maybe twenty four. Uh, Wait, the the penthouse ones, the penthouse. The, comics? Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe it was penthouse, but he was. He was doing pinups that looked like old, you know, fifties pinups, like just painted, uh, like crazy stuff. Like I hadn't, you know, you know, comic art historically has been pretty terrible. You know how it's like through the process, you know, the, you know, beyond the art, like with the shitty color steps, so like it's yeah. always pretty rickety. Yeah. So and then and then in the nineties, it I think it, it went pretty crazy. It got pretty beautiful mm -hmm. with tech and like just people yeah. got more. Like anything, it just got better. But uh, not the discount, the old guys. But uh, then I saw Hughes, and I was like, what are you doing? Like, this is – it was <laughs> on that level. Oh. But, yeah, and now it's nuts. Like, it's great yeah. anybody of any style can jump in. But it's weird when the big two um, shy away from that. And, you know, all they got to do is look over at, you know, what, what the other companies are doing. You know, with like Kirkman and, and with Image and, yeah, you know, you, you best wake up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. It feeds into what Kerry was thinking, his theory about, I think they're just afraid of Image happening to them again. Yeah. But it's going to, uh, that cycle going to keep happening to any big business. I mean, guys are going to get fed up with the system and they're going to leave to go do their creative thing. And I think it's going to happen over and over and over again if they don't get their act together or go away for good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there's a, there's a, uh, I guess like a reciprocity in it where if, if I think it's good to go work for, say you say you have a hit book at image and, uh, and you do whatever a six issue or 12 issue, you're done two trades that you're out, then jump over to Marvel or DC, you know, jump on that bat project or that X project or whatever it is and just get that fan base up. And, you know, maybe you'll bring over, I, I really, I don't know what the margin is, but I feel like you're only bringing about 10 or 20% of those people. Yeah. Cause you know, if I want a Wolverine book. I don't give a shit who's writing it. Yeah. Um, but you brought up uh, Rick working with Remender, like his work on uncanny X force and his work on venom, which I think you did venom with him. Mm -hmm. um, like that allowed him to be a successful. And I, I know he did fear agent before that, but then uh, like those books. Yeah, we didn't brought me fear agent comics. <laughs> hmm? We didn't sell a lot of Fear Agent comics. No, well, those were hard to find, but I'm yes. glad I found them. Yes. Yeah, now they're all re-released. But. but man, but like now when he came back to Image and then started doing the books, because he brought those, he, I mean, he brought me along from Uncanny and Venom. Like I picked up Deadly Class. I picked up Low. And the fact that he could write a book and Tashini could do one one style of art on it and then he could, do, you guys could do Deadly Class. I'm like, whoa, the completely different story, but the writing that he brought with it, and the way he did his stories. So, I mean, that's it. He's an example of someone. If he hadn't done Marvel, he wouldn't have the fan base that he can say, F you to Marvel and DC now, like he does on Twitter. Yeah. I, I think there's a, I think there's a, it's a combination of that because Deadly Class didn't do good numbers. Yeah. It's huh. fair numbers. Um, it's open okay. And then it kind of landed low. Mm. Um, but it was also pretty alternative. You know, I, I would always yeah. say to Rick, like, we wrote a Love and Rockets, you know, comic. Um, but it does look like that. It didn't sell right. Like, it's a punk rock book. Punk mm -hmm. rock wasn't popular, um, at least not in the U.S. Yeah. And um, But, like, the, I think with Rick, it's just, it's also, like, it was, Deadly Class is a great book. But then his other books were great. Yeah. So he started putting out this volume of work at Image. And I think, and he just, you know, with anybody, like, even a guy like Brubaker, like, those motherfuckers put out volume. Like there's a lot of freaking work. And I think, I think DC or Marvel can help you get that attention. But ultimately, like if you go on your own, you need to build like a little, you know, a good empire of books. And, you know, with Rick doing all these books, like long form, 
you know, yeah. 30, 40, 50, 60 issues is fucking, that blows my mind. Like, yeah, I've been writing a bunch of shit and I'm like, open and shut. Like, I'm six issues, we're done. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not easy to do yeah, that. Yeah, quick arc. I'm not trying to do that. Um, but I, I think, I think a lot of guys, it does kick them off. Like Dan Way, remember Dan Way wrote um, uh, Wolverine back in the day and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He went off. This is before the image heyday. He went off and did a book and was, and Venom at that point was our start. Uh, Wolverine was doing like 60, 70,000 copies a month. Mm -hmm. We were speculating. We shared an office. There was a bunch of us in Savannah, Georgia at the time. And uh, I was like, dude, if you get 10%, that's good. Because at the time, that was when Paul Pope books were selling three, 4,000 copies. Yeah. You know, that was on the only level. And, um, THB, heavy liquid. <laughs> yeah. And that even heavy liquid at, um, I did that at Vertigo with him and we didn't, we didn't I don't think it sold like yeah. 7,000 copies. It's probably sold more since then, but obviously. But Dan Way, we thought would do 7,000 and he sold like 400 copies. <sighs> yeah. 400. He did Wolverine. Yeah. What sense does that make? And the comic was cool. I think for you guys to, as artists to go off and do your own image or your uh, whatever smaller publisher, like it's so much now hinges on social media. Like it's so much. Can you say, Hey, this is the other book I'm doing. And I mean, there's a few guys out there. They're doing that now. They're, they have, they're learning how to not only just put their images out there, what they're working on, but they, they know how to tease a book for it, man, this book's coming out. It's coming out next week. You need to hit your FOC. You need to hit your guy up. And it, for me, it helps when I know, because I follow, I mean, the king right now is Donnie Cates at doing it. But when I follow Rick Remender on Twitter, I see that, hey, Scumbag, and he's he's promoting Scumbag months before FOC. I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to see that. Or he finally you released the last in the shops. Like the yeah. stores have to know it's coming because yeah. there's yeah. a lot more publishers now that they might order from than there were from back, you know, when we were collecting in the 90s, it was like Marvel, right, DC, right. and hey, there's Image, and maybe a little Dark Horse. Now you've got like Amigo, and you know, yeah, there's, so many. I, there's, I don't there's know. so many publishers. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's good or bad, you know, I think um, I'm a, I grew up a skateboarder, and yeah. um, I remember when skateboarding had like five, six major companies, and it, the industry was really strong, and um, everyone started their own company, which I'm a fan of, that's a, that's a you know, <laughs> American thing. dream. Yeah. yeah. The dream, you know, uh, he had to start a shitty skateboard company. And, uh, <laughs> but it, but it, it weakened the industry because yeah. now you have these big companies that were capable of having these big events and these big prizes. And, you know, it's, it, it, I don't know, I don't know how it'll work out, but it seems like everyone wants to start a comic company because they're just creating like some sort of IP farm, you know, yeah. That, yeah. You know that they can sell That's off. Yeah, it's just and they're, also, they're open. They're going to get. Gonna get yeah. They're open. They're going to get. Yeah, they're going to get that hot book that that somebody options and they can actually get a show out of it and they can or sell. They get, there's hot twenty books, you know. And now yeah, they're, they're right. have a stable of things they can sell to, you know, one of these companies out out here. Yeah. Uh, but good, you know. Like I, I, I want the creators to get that money for, you know, if it's like anything I do for that matter, and and you know, with my group of friends. Um, Everything we try to do is based on moving it forward to, to that. Beyond the option, the option's bullshit. It just say, <laughs> you know, everyone well, to be it. able to do and to be able to do what you know something that they've had on their mind for a long time. I'm thinking like Frank Cho with Fight Girls, right? He's been yeah. working on that thing since I I talked to him. I interviewed him like two years ago. He was already working on that thing, and it's about to drop finally. And you know how many times can you get told you got to put clothes on Sheena and and uh, and here draw another Harley cover again? And, yeah. You know, finally he gets to do the thing he wants to do. I'm sure he's excited about it. You, did you color that? Is that, that's Sabine Rich or is that you? No colors on that. Uh, not me. Oh, not that's you. Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's like asking a stripper who gave her dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That guy over there, I think. So we're wow. that is going to be our catch line. It's like a stripper. <laughs> Can we please clip that? We got to that. We're definitely clipping that. That's good. Uh, Put that in there. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> we haven't even gotten. I mean, we've gone down this rabbit hole talking. To, I do want to get into our, your topic that you chose because I'm just excited to talk about it's it. It's fun. it's that crappy. Let's sit around the table, drink some beers, and talk about useless superpowers. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> 
Because you guys uh, didn't want to do my racist comic segment. <laughs> no, we, we were like, oh, let's go, uh, go wait. Let's let's just do something fun to talk about and not go down. Even though there's some great racist comics out there that we could bring up, we're just going to leave those alone for now. We can do that uh, next time. Next time. And by great, and by great racist comics, yes. you mean not great, not great, not great, great, not great, but great in the way that no one knew that that was complete and pure racism. <sighs> wow, and that was kind of funny. This was really fun. The end of the day is pretty funny. So, not against you. So the question is, do we go into s mutants and all the ridiculous superpowers that some of these mutants have, or do we go with Batman villains, or do we just pull something out of nowhere? Uh, who wants to throw one out there first that we want to talk about? Uh, forget me not. Okay, go into it. I, I'm, I know the name. Who that is. The name's familiar. Exactly. You don't know who that is. His, his superpower is the ability to make people forget who he is. And it fucking worked. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. Uh, Did you make okay. that up? What, no. what, where, what, where oh, did like, you come from? I'm, I'll find out. Go to the next one and I'll find out. That was my, uh, that was my superhero hero, uh, or superpower in college, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine was just pay no attention that I'm actually here. <laughs> Wallflower. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, like, was he DC or Marvel? Um, I can't remember. I'm looking it up now. See, I'm, I'm really sure you made uh, Marvel, that thing up. Marvel. Completely. Marvel. Uh, <laughs> Forget Me Not was a mutant who was uh, can state a state of consistent existential superposition, both real and unreal. Uh, he is, let's see, where, where did he first appear? Uh, oh, definitely, definitely early. That's a that's a LSD character right there. That's like a, a little girl. Didn't they collect the flowers? The forget me nots and just oh, <laughs> the, oh yeah. He loves me. He loves me not. No. Yeah, X Men Legacy. Not. X Men Legacy three hundred two thousand four. Oh, X Men. Oh wow. Oh, wow. That's, that's like right be, right before it ended. The because yeah. that was yeah. That was Jim Lee's X Men. Then became X, new X Men. Then became X Men Legacy. And then it went away for a little bit because we wanted to support the Inhumans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they didn't own X mutants anymore. But uh, I was so sure that was the seventies. I was like, that's that's late. 70s. <laughs> thought, I thought it was. Right. So I'll throw out a more more famous one, uh, Cipher. The uh, yeah. the ability to translate anything. I mean, what the hell? And he was like a prime <laughs> prime new mutant. Like he was like one of the original wasn't he one of the original ones? The first the early one. new movies, yeah. But like, well, did he? That, that that's not that terrible. Like, if you could if for you a could translator get, job, like, but alien beings, though, you know, you can translate he, and you can keep the peace between races, alien races. That's he's become important in 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 because uh, he talks to Krakow. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, that, but you don't throw him out there and go, okay, go was, fight this battle. It's like, yeah, no, it's he's always good. left back. He's always left back at the bait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. It froze on air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric, classic. Oh, Dazzler. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, everybody Dazzler. loves Dazzler. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. But come on. She turns sound, what, like sound into light? Okay. <laughs> that's useful if yeah. you're not a rock concert, but. It's called ecstasy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's, that sounded. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> Wasn't she the? They created her to take advantage of the disco age. They're like, yeah, and they got they took too long. <laughs> so yeah. she came out in the eighties. Like disco was dead by the time this came out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty corny. That's uh, really corny. So let's who, who invented her? Uh, that's Claremont's run, isn't that's it? Claremont. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But again, I think they meant to have her out like years before. They just took a while before they got her out from yeah. what I was looking at. But because that was because right there, the issue before that's Kitty Pride. Yeah. Um, and then you get the, uh, oh, shoot, what it was Kevin Bacon, the Hells, uh, he was the character. Oh, Sebastian Shaw, Shaw. Yeah, Sebastian Shaw and the what they called the Hellfire Hells Club. Hellfire Club. And then you got uh, Emma, <laughs> Emma Frost. Yeah. I can turn yeah. into diamonds. Um, yeah, Emma Frost. Wow. That wasn't until uh, Grant Morrison made her turn oh, yeah. the diamonds. Oh. But yeah, around that. That was a great run, though. I mean, and still people still want this Dazzler book, but you oh, had, no. there was that one Wolverine book was like his first kind of like solo mission where he was killing those. The, the, the first time I think he said the best yeah, series of 130. Yeah. 133. 
No, but that was, uh, was it, and you, you know Marvel knows it's a bad character when they try to come up with a Hulu cartoon where it's her and Tigress. And... I would have watched it. <laughs> yeah, but that's of course you would have watched it. That's them pandering to little girls through like animated shows. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly. Thing. They're like the yeah. DC superhero girls was good. So let's let's pull out Dazzler and <laughs> put her up there next to Jim and the holograms. I'm oh, looking yeah, forward yeah. to Modoc. I think Modoc's gonna be fun. <laughs> you think they're gonna make those shows, Pete? Modoc yeah, they, have, Modoc is, they have a, a thing. It's almost like stop motion. Yeah, it's a it's a stop motion uh show. It's and they have the trailer for Hulu already. Really? Yeah. And I missed that. Okay. Yeah, Modoc, so, yes. Pat and Oswald. I guess that guy who called me a moron three weeks ago was right. <laughs> uh, let's see. As if I didn't already know that. <laughs> that you're a moron, or that the... I'll, jump, I'll jump in. Um, Robin. <laughs> yeah. Ben. No. Uh, ben which C, one? <laughs> who owns CBSI would love that comic because he. Yeah. Is Robin. Oh man. Like, what is what is Robin's purpose? And it'd be just just. Sucking off a Batman who Batman's just rich kid, he's a rich kid, and uh, like I was saying, like Ollie Queen, another rich kid, but at least Ollie Queen was like a he was a legit yeah. scumbag, like the Met Mike Grell apparel era. That's when I got mm -hmm. the first books I did, where I got into that, and I was like, man, Ollie Queen, all he does is bang girls and kill. <laughs> and his best friend's a mercenary, uh, uh Freddy, Fred, Freddy Meyer, uh. What was his? I can't remember his. That guy's name. Fred Hires or Fred Myers or, or I can't. Oh, it'll come to me. But I just remember I, Shadow. It was only one. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's a little bad. But I'm like, he's a superhero because he's loaded. He's a misogynist and he's really good with a bow and arrow. <laughs> 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 like, but at least he was good with that. What was Robin was good at nothing. He was like a little dude. He was getting captured. Player. He was good at getting captured and then Batman save him. Creating yeah, plot. Creating plot. I get it. <laughs> kind of useless. Yeah, pretty useless. It's sort of like what, well, shoot, all those 50s characters you bring up, there's always that person who has to be saved. So let's give it a super. Uh, was it Batman had Batwoman and Robin, and yeah. he had like a laundry list of people he always had to save. So his sidekick always got saved. Uh, Batman had Jimmy Olsen. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Olsen for Superman, but he, of course, he was never a superhero. Right. Uh, nor a super villain. So then you've got Joker, who's just a sociopath, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With no superpowers. Like, no one can just shoot Joker in the head. Like, we're done here. Like, <laughs> get, out of, get out of fucking jail. Like, just lock him up. It's done. Huh. It's, right? like Negan. it's like Negan from Walking Dead. I'm like, really? Yeah. This guy only has a bat. You can't kill this guy. He's got a bat. Seriously. And a bandana and a leather jacket. Yeah, and now he's like a nice guy. He's like he's found himself. Well, but he, you pull up at what uh, half of the bad bad guys from DC and Flash, uh, yeah. Boomerang. That was a Boomerang. Whatever he just freaking throws a boomerang. Like, why does that a superpower? Like, he can just throw. I That's mean, more of a skill. That is skill. Yeah. skill. yeah, like a good dart thrower can become a super villain if he's really good at throwing darts. Yeah, or bowling. I, I do, yeah. A super, you know, a super, real supervillain would be one that kills the superhero without the powers. Yeah. The joke, well, the joke would be that. a super he, villain just kill Batman. It's super yeah. easy. Well, that's what made uh, Bane such a great villain when he was introduced. Because, like, yeah. within the first arc of Bane being created, he freaking breaks Batman's back. Like, I mean... After letting all the other crazies get at him, which made a lot of sense. It's like, wear him down, and then I'll just come in and steal it. Like like a WWE wrestler. Like, I'll just come in at the end and steal the, <laughs> the victory. That Bane's, Bane's pretty badass. I'm with you on that. But Condiment King, on the other hand, isn't. <laughs> Condiment King? Yeah. <laughs> Mustard and a ketchup gun? Like, <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? From where? Batman. You probably He's called him in the anime, anime series Adventures. and stuff. Like, he, he caught him in King. Uh, From what, what, what show? What, what book? He was on Batman the Well, I know he was on the animated, the cartoon. Uh, he was on there. But there's also, he showed up in the comics a little bit. Was that the Bruce Tim run of the animated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he had the, a ketchup gun and a mustard gun. Uh, that sounds like that. a bad Scooby Doo villain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Or a good. Uh, 
matter. <laughs> the, uh, about, what's that? Uh, Bawana Beast? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, that was one uh, John Z brought up in that app. Oh, my God. He's right. like, the he, ability to mash two animals together? Like, that's man. pretty great. I'm all right. <laughs> that forever. That kind of sounds like a like a male stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got to mash two animals together if you. Do. <laughs> That's true. But uh, well, think about the shoot the James Gunn's uh, Suicide Squad. Oh, the Suicide Squad's full of them. Like patchwork fall apart, man. Uh, yeah, arm fall off boy, or arm yeah. fall off boy, or the detachable kid. I think they're calling him in the movie. Yeah, or a uh, freaking. Oh, John Cena's character, Peacemaker, he wears, I don't even know, his character just did the stupid helmet that he's supposed to. <laughs> he's getting a show. Oh, yeah, on HBO. Uh, well, no, what's the the rat guy? Rat catcher? Rat, rat catcher. Rat oh, catcher? Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, they gender swap, so it's a, a female. So I think it's like his daughter, maybe, or something. In the movie. The ability to control the rats? Is that what it is? Yeah, was, I guess. Wasn't there a movie already called that, like Ben? Well, yeah. Squirrel Girl does the same thing. Just squirrels, I guess, are cuter than rats. Because they have <laughs> hair on their tails? <laughs> you can control the rats, though. You'd, you'd, be pretty, you'd be pretty gnarly. Yeah, you could do some damage if you could control rats. Yeah. Like, better than ants. Yeah. You could control plague and stuff like that with rats, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Rats what was the that? damage. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, if like if like ten ants ran into my room right now, I wouldn't run in fear. I'd just start stomping them. If ten if, rats came in this room right now, I'd yeah. freak the, I'd freak out and I'd I'd run. What is it? Uh Rick and Morty with Million Ants Man? Did you guys see that episode? I don't know if oh. you watched Rick and Morty. Uh oh, Rick and Morty, yeah, there's a, it, Rick Rick makes fun of the guy. His entire power is he controls ants and he's like, Here, I got bug spray. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> his name was Million Ants Man and then he the, he's only in like one episode and he dies. Yeah, that like Avenger type episode that they did. No, exactly. That's a one. It's a one episode character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most of those characters should be should have been a one issue or one episode because they're too fucking stupid to make it beyond that. But it's think, surprising how many keep going on. Like, why do people still? I mean, I like Jubilee because she came out when I was reading X Men. But really, she makes fireworks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Again, I, maybe it's just the lights. Maybe I'm just. I, I don't take lights very seriously, but <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're anti-light. I understand. I'm anti-light. So, but that was my other one. I went with Would you believe? Because it's just lights and X books. Because I love the X Men, but they've made a lot of silly characters over the years. Yeah, that's a ridiculous superpower. It's fun, but it's ridiculous. I mean, I guess I guess you could ward people off of that, blind yeah. you, and run away fast. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like the the smoke bombs. You just run and then try to hide as fast as you can. You can cause some very light burns. <laughs> but <laughs> I still remember though. I remember her so vividly from the cartoon because that was like her big. She was the big character in the cartoon with the the fireworks going off because she you see yeah, her in well, the mall was, or whatever. Yeah, she was like the point of view that like introductory character to get you to learn who the X Men were. They're bringing this new character in, and yeah. then even during Jim Lee's run, like she what was that one character from the future? Like you were the last X Men. I'm like. Really? This is this is it. <laughs> You're the, the one that's getting his jubilee. <laughs> they didn't hold to that for very long, but th there was a time where and that's then was, creating a character like for visuals only. You know, like yeah. that's cool visually. You know, or she just creates diversions. They should have called her the diverter, you know, or the divert. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, light off mortars out of my arms and yeah, I'm gonna dress her like a little mall rat girl. We'll give her some bright colors with yellow jacket, pinks, like a uh, hyper color shirts and things that were cool at the time. Hyper color, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's that's a deep cut right there. I love it. I had one. I had one hyper color. It's not like so I did I. Zubaz yeah. or anything like that. Oh, but. The ones that changed colors when you yeah you, yeah. yeah. Put your fan on it. There was no ability. You couldn't hit on any girls because you, the, the second you started sweating, it was like, oh, I know he's nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like armpit stains galore. Here we go. You don't need hyper color for that. You wear a Heather Gray shirt, that same shit will happen when hey, you start sweating. I'm, I'm trying to pinch arms together right now. <laughs> <laughs> they, should those, uh, they should make condoms out of that material. <laughs> <laughs> to turn black that's it black. <laughs> no you're I, gotta hand, I gotta hand it to hickman for taking gold balls and making them important <laughs> gold yeah. <Speaking> of, 
Here's the guy to do it. That is a that's a speaking of deep cuts. That's a deep cut. Yeah. Well done. Well, you can go I with the. We're, we're leaning too heavily on X. We're we're, we're ripping X Men a little bit too much. The, the other ones we could rip the Legion of Superheroes. You can go to any of those guys. Dude, was it, that's the ones that bring up the Bouncy Ball guy, Bouncy Boy, or whatever. Yeah, a Bouncy Boy. <laughs> Anything yeah. you can think of. Too much coffee, man. I don't know. <laughs> but that's not that's not Legion. But for whatever reason, I thought of that. Is that that's real too? Yeah, too much coffee, man. Yeah, that's an indie book, though. What are you, we just got? What are you just stressed out? I don't know. There's just a there's just a title that was too much coffee. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm up here. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm pretty sure I'm correct. <laughs> well, that's a but that's a different. Like Marvel and DC, that you feel like sometimes the writers just throw some shit out there and see what happens and see if it takes off. Because I mean, hey, create a new character. I think. Right now, Marvel's figured out that people only speculators only buy books because they're, let's create a new character. So every other week, there's a new character created, and you're just like, why? Why do we have this version of Venom? Why is there seven versions of Venom right now? Uh, why, why is there was the the new one for Captain Marvel? Ove and Bridget, the sister who holds the hammer, who is going to die in three issues or something, or. Uh, because one Venom book sells well, and they say, let's make up three other Venom books, and we'll flood the retailers with this crap. Oh, yeah. I'm not crazy. See? Oh, you're not crazy. Oh, so my bad. God. <laughs> I, actually, I actually need to go buy that. Every show. How is it that every show <laughs> anyway. I end up spending money? <laughs> now yeah, now well, I need that book. I thought this show I was safe on this show. There wasn't a single book. <laughs> That I would want to buy, but I, I already got a shit ton of these books. That's why I don't need to go buy them. Like I, I, I have my death my I have all those, so I'm good on the X Men. But that's for sure parody. Like that's an indie book. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. exactly. Funny as hell. Yeah, yeah. That's like a Scud. Uh, yeah, uh, assassin. Uh, assassin. Yeah, Captain Carrot type book. I think the focus is, has to be on, you know, like legit. Books that these guys thought was serious. Like this is a badass character. Listen like a guy it. with a with a puppet what? is going to take on Batman because he's a ventriloquist. Th then we have to go to the '90s. You have to do was it Rage? Uh, yeah. Or you shoot Darkhawk, who evidently just got TV news, but uh, like really, he had like, like an amulet. Yes, but it was one that you could tell it was like we're going to make a character that's the most '90s character ever to appeal to. <laughs> uh, like I mean, and maybe not Darkhawk, but Rage was definitely one. You had an entire. Night Watch. We'll just make him look like Spawn. Yeah, and... yeah. I think everyone was just copying Spawn at that point. Yeah. Was well, I still love the uh, the way freaking Deadpool got created? I mean, he ended up being a fun character, but he got created because they wanted to make fun of uh, Deathstroke. Yeah. Uh, just like, okay, really? <laughs> oh, I had no idea. The because Deathstroke's name is Slade Wilson, and so Deadpool is Wade Wilson, and then they're almost identical looking characters and everything. That's funny. I, I always wanted to do a, a spin-off uh, Deathstroke book. I did some Deathstroke stuff, and I wanted to do one, uh, Meat Stroke the Sperminator. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I pitched that to editors. They didn't, they didn't buy it. <laughs> I would have bought it. <laughs> yeah. I was like 25. I thought that was pretty funny. I, I still think it's pretty funny. Hey, I'm still 42, and I still think it's funny. I think it's funny. I laughed. <laughs> That's all right. I, I mean, I bought the. Didn't anybody else buy the the Aardvark, uh oh, the, yeah, penis. The, the penis, the penis book? Didn't anyone else the buy penis that? Penis on the cover. I had to buy it. Uh, I mean, I'm a child. I collect comic books. For God's sake, of course, I bought a comic book that said penis on the cover. I I have no idea what you're even talking about. It was, uh, a, it was a parody on um, on uh, Batman Damned. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, but it was Cere it was Cerebus uh, from from Aardvark, and uh, <laughs> they I, just. I, I, <laughs> Do you have it? I have. I just don't. It's in a box right in here. Yeah, mine's buried too. Mine's buried too. To but of course, because of the Batawang uh, conspiracy, they decided that would be a good parody. So they just they they redid the cover with Cerebus on the cover, and then just the title was Penis. They got my three ninety nine. So yeah, they got my the edited version with the, the X's instead of Penis, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> which apparently is the which apparently is the more sought after version, which makes no damn sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, one of the pitches, I, I, I couldn't find the book. My initial idea, 
for today was um, I was wanted to do books based on people's obsession, like guys' obsession with dicks, like their own dicks or whatever dicks in general. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't find a comic, but you guys will know what it is. I remember I it was probably it probably came out in ninety four ninety three and the guy it was an indie book it was like it was a uh, wide uh, landscape and it was black and white and it was about a guy who got some porno mags and the entire book was about him being obsessed with hiding the porno mags and having his parents not find them and he he beat off to them and then like he got to a point where he was convinced his parents knew he hit him in his room and then he went out and he, he, he put him in a, like a cigar box and hit him in a field. Like he buried him in a field and he'd go out to the field and he'd unearth them and he'd have his time with them. And then you sure then, this is a comic book and not just my life. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was dark about life. And then, then he decided he, he was afraid someone was going to catch him going to the field. So we threw him out in a trash can downtown and he saw a neighbor of his and then he was convinced the neighbor saw him throw him in the trash can. So he went back and took him out of the trash can and reburied them back in the field. It was, I can't remember who did it. It just driving me crazy because it was so Holy good. Shit, I have no idea, but I really want this now. No, I was, I was <laughs> all wise, right? I had mine rolled into a, I got to the point with mine. First, I thought I was smart. I would, I would juxtapose them within like my BMX and skateboarder mags and whatever. <laughs> and then one day I, I get home and I go to see my old, my friends, my girls, and uh, they're all gone. My, my mother had gone through each one. And I get she threw them out, and luckily it was trash day. And I went down to the trash, pulled them all out, <laughs> went back into my house, and I was like, "Where can I hide these?" And I unrolled um, a, a what do you call it? A, a Jesus Christ, you know, Poster? a sleeping bag. I unrolled my sleeping bag. Oh, that's like sleeping bag. Yeah. And I laid them in the sleeping bag, and I rolled them in the sleeping bag. <laughs> that's I genius. Like, I was like, "Find those, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna take that from me. Oh no. wow! That not, yeah, you, you, as you can tell, we're complete nerds. The fact that we we can reference any pop culture movie with you, <laughs> and any yeah. toy, and any comic book, and really anything that's you know nerd. <laughs> we have I'm sitting special. in a I'm sitting in a cantina bench for God's sake. I mean, oh yeah, you are. <laughs> but what, what other choppy uh, power? I can't think of any now. I'm trying to th- like, yeah, that's the bad thing. It's like they're so forgettable. Oh, here we go. Oh, Beak. Pete's on. This is not his Beak. first appearance, but Beak. Oh, I mean, he was a flightless Beak. bird. Who, who, who? You got to look like this, and that's your proud. You like, you look like a shitty bird who can't fly. At least Angel got to fly. Like you just look like shit. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. I forgot about Beak. Yeah, that's really how bad. Would, how would they write that into a story where where he or she or they was uh useful? Was I don't know. It, it probably not in any way. It's just Grant Morrison just writing a pathetic character who just oh, has a shitty that, life. No, that, that makes sense. It's Grant Morrison. Yeah, exactly. He goes, <laughs> they probably write a new character and he goes, okay. All right. He's <laughs> <laughs> the character. Maybe he went to Southeast Asia and he got like one of those things where they eat the ungrown <laughs> birds out of the egg. And he said, you know what? This thing would make a good character. Yeah. Yeah. An right. incomplete bird. Well, then, then he switch over to Green Lantern and, and then create a bunch of Green Lanterns that had basically the same powers too, or lack thereof. I'm trying to oh, think of like Black all stars. the, yeah, like he did he create? Am I maybe no? I'm thinking Jeff Johns. That's what Who, I was like, Grant Morrison doing Green Lantern. I, I, well, he did. Well, recently. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I, that's crazy to me. I, I don't know why like a writer writers like of his stature would mm-hmm. waste their story on on anything else but their own. It. it Unless they, he really had ideas for it. That you want to put their mark on it. I mean, when you think of like what he did with the X-Men, he completely just said, nope, we're taking him. We're putting him in black leather. I'm going to make Professor X have a weird sister. That <laughs> like, But that was the 90s, yeah, the crazy yeah, really ideas. Funny. But, well, I guess he's doing that with the Green Lantern. Like when he took it over, he created some, he was able to make his, some of his, make some things that might end up being something like, but. I don't know. That's you're right. Like I hadn't thought of that. Like if you've already made your mark, like I don't foresee Brian K. Vaughn ever coming back to do a Marvel character, Marvel thing, or um, right a DC. 
Like he's yeah. made his mark. He doesn't you need do to do it back. if you just want to make your own crazy again mark on um, an established character. Then yeah, you're gonna yeah, make a I, Batman I, Zoran Ah. Like what is that? I don't know. We're gonna make a Batman who's got a weird patchwork like outfit that's the backup system for Batman in case he finds himself broken. This will make yeah. him survive. Like just crazy ideas. Like and then they stick. Yeah, I think I think of a lot of it too is. Um... A lot of guys grew up reading all the books and then they go on and make their mark and they do the thing, but they still want to make their mark on that book. Still got that itch. Point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah I guess it has to be like to be able to be said, like in the in the breath, like when you, when people mention X Men, you people automatically think uh like Claremont is that you think of X Men, you think Claremont, like I mean Grant Morrison, but I think of Claremont first. Like I mean, you want to consider yourself to be the name known with that character. Um, for yeah. a writer, I'm sure that's a challenge. Like Tom King's one who's trying to he's put up his mark on Batman. Sadly, most people don't like it at all. So they're like, uh, but like he's Vision. He's create Vision's become a good character because of his little run on Vision. And yeah, uh, well that's the thing. You take a smaller character yeah. and make them your own, but it's tough when you have an established character already has like seminal runs that yeah. other people love. Like you can't really make Batman yours anymore. Like there's just been too many but Batman Sn runs at this yeah, point. Yeah. I think yeah. Snyder, Snyder though, though, like his little new 52, he re redefined sort of where Batman could go. Cause he actually started it with those great, great jock covers in the detective series. Yeah. Well, Tinian, Tinian's doing a good job with it now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to work it out on detective first. Yeah. True. Yeah, because he. I did a Snyder run with John a couple of years back. And Which one? The uh, Wake. I can't remember. No, he did that. That was Snyder, but that was a. Uh, it was probably more than a couple. It might have been four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, I oh, talked all with, right, man. I, I talked with an editor a few years back about a Batman idea. Like he was like, "What would you be interested in trying to trying something like that?" And. And what, what, what do you think he'd do? And I said, he's dead, page four. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, who kills him? I go, Joker's going to blow his fucking brains out. It's done. That's that. <laughs> yeah, he goes, then what? I go, I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> There's my pitch. <laughs> then we bring in Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have seven RIP issues. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, you still variants. I guess that was my asshole way of saying no. You know. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> like monetarily monetarily they'll make you like right like you know four pitches you'll spend a month dialing it in and then you're not getting paid and then finally you get paid on the script and by the time you got you know a hundred hours in this thing for one script and you know maybe you make royalties if you're a snyder but you know if you're anyone else you're not really going to make a whole lot it's tough yeah. I like. I mean, I, sometimes if you're introduced to a bunch of characters, mm -hmm. sometimes in the art they're not. You can't differentiate what the characters. Sometimes and it gets confusing and yeah. yeah, it's tough. Like it's tough when people have you know they put out new books with a lot of characters. It's it's hard to keep up with art wise if the artist and it, and the colors don't break them apart enough. Yeah, yeah. like oh well, this one's got like a pink shirt and this one's got a blue shirt. All right, I know pink and I know blue, so I can tell them apart differently. But everybody's wearing black. I'm having a hard time differentiating yeah. talking right now because it's a bubble. I don't hear a different voice. I'm reading the same words. I have to figure out who's talking. Yeah, where we're from. And that's kind of like, I mean, the, it's the artist's job. But color-wise, that's what I look at as well, trying to <clears throat> lead your eye to where it should be. You know, you've got that little character walking down the street, but he's got a balloon, but you don't really see him if there's no balloon. You know, it's sort of like, how do we halo that? You yeah. Know, yeah. You know, yeah. Way, sometimes like, they don't give you that same spatial, like, all right, well, this guy was on the left of the panel, and this guy was on the right, and now we're going to flip-flop it because now we're at a different angle, but it's confusing to me as a reader because I don't know you flip-flopped. I don't know who's who because you changed the perspective all in the Yeah, so, exactly. That's why, like, character A needs to be definitely a black dude. Character B needs to be the white guy, or you know, or one yeah. somebody's got to have a baseball hat or no yeah, hat. Yeah, he's got the hat on. Guy yeah, with hat. Yeah, no hat. There's a lot. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of times that can get really confusing. I think. Yeah, but, it can slow me up. Or like you as a reader, you'll latch on to certain characteristics of a character, and then all of a sudden they'll change artists, and you're like, wait, that's not what that character looked. Who is that? I don't know. 
Yeah, or or like um, the black and white stuff. You think about read the original Walking Dead comics. You're like, who the hell is who? I don't. Everybody looks the same. Yeah, yeah they're all black yeah. and white. So they, yeah. who uh, Dave redid all those, right? Stuart now. Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I lost uh, track. Did they put it out? Yeah, uh, the, they're on issue you know, two. Yeah, two. Oh, in. he's doing it an issue at a time. <laughs> but I'm wondering how long it will go. I can't imagine going for what 193 <laughs> or something I like think, that. I think Dave did them all or is close to being done with them all. I, really? I, I saw he put something up that said after two years, you know, finally finishing this project, unless it was something else, but I, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> certain it was. It was oh, bad. wow. So he, the, he had already started fine. on it before whether or not he, maybe he knew it was ending, but before the w- world knew that Walking Dead was ending, he had already started coloring them. Yeah. I we'll see you so. guys in 15 years when uh, the last one comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they decided to do it a few years back. You know, I'm sure Robert had it planned and was like, well, we need to get ahead of this. You know, or, you know, Dave, how many issues of this can you do a month? You know, maybe he was like, I could do two a month, maybe one. You know, you got to get, you got to get ahead of that. I think they're releasing them one a month. I don't think it's oh, coming out faster than that. Yeah, I guess that, that makes sense. I mean, especially if you can only do, well, that, yeah, that's, I thought they were going to put them out in like, just in trades. Mm. Yeah, now they're doing the no, one. They make as much money as you can. Yeah, I mean, with <laughs> multiple covers for each issue uh, and all that fun stuff. I, uh, yeah, it's weird. You, it, it's weird. Just, it's interesting, but like about the, the whole floppy format, I, I feel like it might be turning to issue one, then we wait for the trade, like for a lot of readers. But I'm not sure. What do you guys think about that? Well, who who's doing that? Is that scout Wait, doing what yeah. actually Do- doing that where the, we'll release a single issue and then we're going to give you the rest in trade like uh is that tko I, uh, I know one of the publishers is actually they have that format for some of their TKO books did them all at once they yeah. give you like an yeah. issue one for the people who like to collect issue ones and then the rest of the story will just be a trade like they're not doing a monthly and then a trade it's just issue one and then a trade I, yeah i'm not sure this? No. I want to say with Scout. I feel like it was a well. Scout's hey. tricky because they only typically their books only have like three issues, anyways. Like it's they do short books, short floppies yeah. or whatever. TKO's doing that. Jeff Lemire had his uh, whatever it's called. Shoot, his book came through TKO because it was straight graphic novel. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah he does do just do graphic too. novels too. Yeah, I wonder what the what where it's going with that because I know like traditionally like with floppies on the indie level by issue five or six. You're kind of in the hole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's um, tough because it, everything's working like a couple of months ahead. So it's like if you're buying off of like our previews list, it's like I got to order issue three before I even read issue one. Do I want to keep up with this title? I don't know because I haven't read it yet. Yeah. yeah I, well, I, I know a lot of guys advance the shops issue one. You know that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I guess you get a good idea if, if you want to order it or not and see what other people are saying. But the, I think a lot of the creators are a lot more savvy, you know, nowadays to how that works and who to reach out to. And, you know, sure. I think if it's me, I think in the future, I'll, I'll give them the first three. Yeah. In well, I know time. image started doing that. Their advanced reader copies they send out are the first three issues. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, look at that. Cause I said, uh, was I have actually have a copy of middle West, the first three issues of middle West. And then the other side, it's actually two books in one. And then the other side of it's Bully Wars. So Scotty oh, Young has both his books at the same image book. And then uh, Fire Kirkman did that with Firepower yeah, when no, he released that one. I probably think I thought of that, but I heard it and then I broke it. <laughs> I thinking I thought of that. <laughs> what was the other Kirkman book that did that? Uh, uh, Oblivion Song. Oblivion Song. That's it. That's it. I couldn't think of it. Yeah. Like I mean, it, it's as if you if you have your three issues done, which I mean, most image books you pretty much already have have a you. Should, probably should have your first six or are you on the verge of being done? Yeah. You're supposed to have three done before you announce if it's, yeah. a, if, you know, if, well, you're supposed to have three done. Yeah. But sometimes it takes some of us, to, you know, five years to do three issues. Are you shooting <laughs> flat? What uh, was it? Zafino is the other one that takes forever. Uh, well, he only it does up. covers, right? Zafino. Yeah. Hey, well, he tried. Yeah. I think he only does covers. Image uh, learned the hard way right out of the right out of the gate with Pitt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it took him like four oh, years wow. to release three issues. <laughs> he was bang the Hulk books he was doing were coming out. 
I know, but Pitt oh, wasn't delayed. But yeah, it's, oh. it's tough. The schedules are tough for a lot of the, especially the good guys, because now they have they're getting pulled in all different directions to do commissions and go to you know well pre COVID. Have you guys heard of COVID? <laughs> uh, what do you mean? <laughs> like guys would try to you know stay up on their monthly thing, but then their you know their art agent is sending them the you know twelve cons a year, you know, to, and they yeah I can see that commissions before the con they're working through the con they're working after the con then they can't get anything done and then you know you you blink and now you're just like a commission artist you know yeah One years goes by you're at your testosterone's at two hundred and you're just. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to come and get drunk, draw Batman, and you know. Oh, I can't wait till Con start again. Just waiting for the next drink and draw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way they could do the cons where it's you know. But I mean, it looks like we're getting a we're getting a vaccine, so maybe that'll. Yeah, we, I think next- we saw what ECC is like now December. Like they they keep pushing it back like six months at a time. Uh, the Emerald City Coast. Well, December yeah. of 2021. Yeah. That's a year from a month from now. That's, I think it's doable. I think New York has a chance too. I, I, I don't think anything will happen until October. Yeah. Because um, like, a lot of friends of mine are in the music industry and they're all like tour people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Lee, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, just, it's been, I've learned so much, but also just, it was fun talking shit yeah, about. Um, crappy comic book characters. I mean, I, that, that's just fun to me. I mean, it's the type of thing we love doing anyways. It's glad to know that someone else wants to do it too. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm glad we got way off topic too. I, I, sorry, but I think it, it was no, really, this has been really fun. This has been really I had fun. a lot of fun. And I want to do one of your other topics soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'll come up with more. <laughs> we'll just wait a while. Yeah, we'll just a little but, bit. yeah, please come back on with us at some point. That'd be great. Yeah, for sure. This was a blast. Cool. In an hour and a uh, hour and thirty eight oh six. So I put that out there. We'll see how much you cut out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, I don't know. Chris is in charge of it now. Oh yeah, throw it at me. So, but yeah, thank you so much for being with us uh, once again, guys. Three Comic Money. This is comicbookinvest dot com, and uh, thank you. Boom. Thumbs up.